Okay, this one is for all the vocal nerds in the Voice Essentials community. Sound check. Check one, check two. G'day one and all, welcome to Voice Essentials where everybody sings. My name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist. Now, that doesn't mean I know everything there is to know about the human voice and learning to sing. And that's especially true of today's topic, formants and harmonics. Now, this being said, where possible, I do my very best to answer the questions that come in from my subscribers. And so when Rosanna's friend asked, can you do a lesson on formants and harmonics? I hesitantly promised that I would produce a video explaining this difficult subject. And a word of caution, today's video may get a little complex, but I'll do my very best to keep it as simple as possible. So let's start by laying out some definitions. Firstly, Dr. Matthew Hock writes that formants occur naturally in the oral cavity and pharynx and interact with the harmonic series of the fundamental frequency being sung. The fundamental frequency is what you and I might call pitch. For example, if you're singing an A3, then the fundamental frequency would be 220 hertz. Formants are the resulting resonances of the vocal tract between the glottis and the lips and nostrils. You see, when you sing an A3, your vocal folds don't only produce a single frequency of 220 hertz. Uh, the human voice produces what is known as a complex sound. So when we sing the pitch of A3 at 220 hertz, our voice is also producing overtone frequencies of 440 hertz, 660 hertz, 880 hertz, and so on. Now, Kenneth Bozeman, a leading author on the subject of vocal acoustics for singers, further defines the formants, stating, the first lowest two formants of the vocal tract are also the most tunable and therefore the most significant in defining the vowel quality of a sound. Together they are called vowel formants. When we group the fundamental frequencies, frequency together with its overtones, we collectively call them a harmonic series. Dr. Hock's definition of the harmonic series is again helpful here. He writes, the harmonic series plays an essential role in singing and the resonance of singing. Variations in the strength of specific harmonics in the harmonic series are the reason why no two voices sound alike even if they are singing the same pitches. Hock goes on to affirm Bozeman's earliest, earlier assertion that the harmonic series has everything to do with the colour of an individual voice. Now, as we continue, it is only right that I give full acknowledgement to Bozeman's work in vocal, uh, vocal acoustics because much of what we will be looking at today is mainly guided by his two instructional books, Practical Vocal Acoustics and Kinesthetic Voice Pedagogy. He was also kind enough to review the script for today's video and give me a couple of little tweaks and corrections. So what is the difference between formants and harmonics, I hear you ask? Well, Bozeman states that vocal resonance is the result of the interactions between voice source, the vibrator, harmonics and the vocal tract formants, the tube resonances. Essentially there is an interaction between the source and the tube that the source then must travel through. In this case the vocal tract can either benefit and enhance the source harmonic or equally it can detract from the resonance of the source harmonic. And this is why we singing teachers bark on so much about vocal tract shapes uh, such as tongue placement and pharyngeal space because we want to develop the formants, the resonance of the pitch. Without seeking to simplify the subject to the point of inaccuracy, it can be helpful to simply think of the harmonic and harmonic series being formed by the vocal folds with the formants being developed by the vocal tract. I'm now going to show you a cool little program called the Made Voice Synthesizer that will show us the interactions between harmonics and formants. But before I do, be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you're learning something from today's video. The activity we're about to go through is called the Mard Exploration 3 and is taken directly from Bozeman's book, Practical Vocal Acoustics. So let's dive in and have some fun. So here we are, we're going to talk our way through the uh, 
the Mard Synthesizer and using uh, Kenneth Bozeman's book uh, and the Mard Exploration uh, number three. And this is uh, titled Formant Resonation of Source Harmonics, the Harmonic Formant Crossings. And he set this up to replicate uh, a similar shape to an E in a bass voice. So the E vowel in a bass voice. And he makes wants us to, <coughs> you can see we've got a whole heap of settings here. The first formant is set at 440, the second at 1520, 220, uh, and so on. He wants us to uh, click this button down here. Now you notice that it then, so we've got the keyboard down the bottom, and then what happens is if we click on this, it shows the formants and the partials. So the formants being these red sections. So for example, if I click up here on F1, you can see that that red area down here is removed. So we're removing the first formant. We'll have a look at what difference that makes to the sound in a moment. And so what we've got here is the formants and these sections here are the harmonics with this one here being the fundamental frequency or the pitch that is going to be sung. So if we uh, sing this note <coughs> that sound <clears throat> and then as we go up let's uh, let's just walk up um, in semi uh, in tones and semi tones and as we approach the first formant you're going to hear the change in the in the tone there's a big difference in the tonal quality from there to there. And that's because the voice has, has transitioned. We come back down, we'll turn that off. <clears throat> and so he encourages you to, in the book, to play around with that. And what we'll do now is let's just play around with it. Let's um, do the same thing. But let's this time, if I press the button, this time, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to remove the first formant. Have a listen to the sound. And we'll take the first formant away. Let's take the second formant away. Remembering that the first two formants are what shape the vowel. They're known as the vowel formants. And so you can hear a difference to the tone. So there it is. That's the Mard uh, synthesizer. It's it's quite um, it's quite complex. And voice scientists use this a lot. And I'm by no means a voice scientist. Just starting to delve into this. I encourage you to download your free copy and start playing around with it also. And you can hear those different vowel uh, that those different sounds as you move along through uh, those sounds. <laughs> I hope you've learned something from today's video about formants and harmonics. You can download your own free copy of the Mard Voice Synthesizer and start playing with it yourself. I'll leave a link to the download site in the description section below, as well as an affiliate link to Bozeman's excellent ta uh, text, Practical Vocal Acoustics. I highly recommend you getting your own copy if you want to explore vocal acoustics in more depth. Vocal resonance is a complex subject and I hope I haven't muddied the waters too much. I promise we'll return to an easier subject next week. I hope you'll join me then. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well. <laughs>